In this video, I want to go over how we draw Lewis structures for species that don't have an expanded octet. So these are species that you'll find in periods 2 and, and uh, below. Now the calculations that I use in order to draw these structures will end up giving us um, a number that tells us the number of bonds that this that this species that we're trying to draw have. So let's look at a, let's look at an example. So this is a pretty basic molecule, and if you didn't know what type of molecule it was. Uh, well, if you did know what type of molecule it was, it would be pretty easy to draw. Let's say we didn't know uh, what type of molecule it was. So in order to do these Lewis calculations, first thing that I do is I start off by determining the number of electrons that the species needs. Um, the number of electrons that each atom in the species needs in order to obtain a stable octet or stable duet. And we have two carbon atoms in this molecule, and each one wants to obtain a stable octet. So that will be 16 electrons between the carbons, and there are two hydrogens, and each one wants to obtain a duet. So that will be four electrons. The next thing that I do is determine the number of electrons that each atom has, the number of valence electrons that each atom has in its ground state. And carbon has four valence electrons in its ground state. And there are two carbons here, so that will be eight electrons. And hydrogen has one valence electron, and there are two of those, so that will be another two electrons. And that gives us ten. The next thing that we do is we take the difference. which of course is 10 and divide that number by 2 and that ends up giving us the number of bonds that this species will have so in this case that will be 5 bonds Now we can draw our species we know we have a general idea of how it's going to look we know that the carbons will be in the middle and the hydrogens will be at the end so it'll look something like that and now we just have to distribute our bonds of course, we'll put, uh, we'll put a bond here to give hydrogens their duet. And the remaining bonds will go between the carbons. And of course, if you count, each bond is worth two electrons. So carbon each carbon now has a stable octet. So that will be our Lewis structure for this molecule. And of course, it's an it's uh, ethyne. It's an alkyne, so that makes perfect sense that there would be a triple bond. Let's do another example. Nitrogen disulfide.
So again, we can start off by calculating the number of electrons that each atom in this species needs in order to have a stable octet. So, so the nitrogen and both sulfurs want to obtain a stable octet. So that's just 8 times 3, or 24 electrons. And now we calculate the number of a, the number of valence electrons that each atom has in its ground state. Nitrogen has five, and sulfur has six. And there are two sulfurs, so that would be twelve. And that will give us seventeen. We take the difference. Seven, divide that by two, and that will give us the number of bonds that this species will have. And it's an seven, of course, is an odd number, and that gives us an odd number of bonds, which may seem strange, but it's really not. If you ever get an odd number of bonds, it just means that that the species is paramagnetic. And I think we can agree that if we draw our Lewis structure, the nitrogen will be in the center, and the sulfurs will be up to the sides. Now we can write in our bonds. We know that there are going to be three full bonds. So one of them, there will be a double bond between the nitrogen and the sulfur. And we have half a bond. And we account for that half bond by well, remember, one half of a bond is just one single electron. So we account for that single electron by placing it over the nitrogen. And of course, the sulfurs want to obtain a stable octet. So we have to give that to them by drawing in the electrons. And another thing to note is that this compound, this molecule, will also exhibit resonance due to, due to uh, the double bond here and a single bond there. So that will be our Lewis structure for nitrogen disulfide. Let's do one final example. This species is called fluorocyanide. And again, we start off by calculating the number of electrons that, that each atom in the molecule needs in order to obtain a stable octet. So fluorine, carbon, and nitrogen all want to obtain a stable octet, so that will be 24 electrons. Calculate the number of electrons that um, that each atom has in its ground state valence, and that will be seven, four, and five, which gives us sixteen. Take the difference. gives us 8, divided by 2, and that gives us the number of bonds. In this case, 
four. Now we can draw our Lewis structure. It's going to look a lot like the formula. Now we know that nitrogen likes to nitrogen likes to form three bonds. And carbon likes to form four bonds. And we make sure that they all have this a stable octet, add two there, and add six electrons there. And that will be our Lewis structure for fluorocyanide.